Hello everybody, Brian Tulsa here. What are you doing today? Today, I'm gonna watch the next part of the Fire by Night sex episodes. I know I said I was gonna do something easy today, but I changed my mind. After that last episode, I've just been thinking about this, and I wanna go ahead and roll right into the next episode. The first episode was um, horrid. It, these two episodes are probably the worst episodes of Fire by Night. Worst in terms of, of hate, homophobia, sexism, uh, the, the manipulation of teenagers' uh, self-esteem for the purpose of scaring them away from sex. It's, it's terrible. And now that I've had my memory refreshed, I do remember these episodes. I, I remember them well. I, I know what happens in this one. And I, I just want to show you. I want you to see this for yourself. Uh, take note of who the villains are. And take note of who the heroes are. And how the heroes act toward the villains. This is not innocent uh, teaching of uh, some universal moral. This is indoctrination of, uh, of religious dogma that is harmful. It's harmful to uh, the LGBT community. It uh, provides a justification for uh, discrimination and hate. It's dangerous for teenagers because it advocates abstaining from sexual activity when even their own statistics that they showed on their show indicate that that doesn't work. And even those who are religiously inclined to abstain from sex until marriage still end up having sex before marriage. It's dangerous because uh, they specifically and deliberately undermine uh, the methods of protection against the dangers that they are so eager to point out. Contraception uh, for prevention of pregnancy and disease, sex ed education, uh, tr simply treating people, especially young women, as autonomous and capable of making decisions about their own body. These things are all bad. All the things that could be done to help people accept themselves and accept their own sexuality and accept their own uh, thoughts and desires as uh, valid and not evil and to prevent harm from coming to them. Let's just jump into it, let's do it. Um, uh, this uh, episode is what, um, 8911, I think? Uh, so, uh, year 1989, episode 11. This is uh, Fire by Night. Sex, what do you pay to play? This is not gonna be fun. And after this, I don't know if I will screen another Fire by Night because even though there are episodes that I think are enjoyable and even funny and harmless, it may be hard for me to enjoy them so much and share them with you after watching this, which is not harmless. They are mocking safe sex. Are you here for a clean needle? Now you realize that we are not in any way condoning this type of behavior. 
But you're gonna do it anyway, aren't you? You don't have any self-control, do you? Or I'm you talking about addiction. Well, just... This is shameful. Better than taking a chance on that old street stuff, isn't it? Now, does that feel better? And remember, safe drugs. No way. Safe sex. And clean needles for addicts so they don't get diseases by sharing needles is equivalent to getting a gun and getting mad and shooting people. Now here's your gun. This one's registered. You don't have to worry about those dangerous street guns. That is a... That's a BB pistol. Actually, I used to, used to have a BB pistol exactly like that one. That's not a real firearm. Although it looks enough like a real firearm that you could rob a bank with it. That was not funny. Besides which, th this is done in Oklahoma. Everybody's pro guns here anyway. So I think that it's a little odd that they would go with that um, false equivalent. The opening theme has that 90s style. It's like, it's in black and white. It's a bunch of quick cuts. It's, uh, you know, kids running down the street. And yeah, it's like 21 Jump Street or something. The show is often referred to as the Christian Saturday Night Live. And other episodes are more like Saturday Night Live, I guess, a little bit, because they have more sketch comedy. Um, but all of them have preaching like this, and um, none of them even approach uh, the quality of, uh, of Saturday Night Live. You see, sex is never free when someone else has to pay for it. But what about you? You that may be playing the game with sexual immorality. Can you afford to pay the price to stay in the game? That's right, ladies. If you have an abortion, you could be aborting Jesus. Then you are opening up your body to sexually transmitted diseases or STDs, and the effects can range from bothersome to fatal. And if you sleep around enough, you're very likely to get something. Did you know that there are currently 33? If you sleep around enough, you're very likely to get something. They're intentionally trying to uh, raise a person's perception of their risk um, while not, not, not telling the truth about mitigation of that risk. Josh McDowell can eat a bag of dicks. Never been sick a day in his life. Twelve days later, January 14th, he died. They said, she said, Mr. McDowell, they traced it back to an affair he had with a woman six years ago, two years before they ever got married. He's claiming to be tested to see if I have AIDS, to see if I'm going to live. They, they don't care about protecting people from AIDS because if they did care, they would tell people how to protect themselves from AIDS. For them, the AIDS epidemic was an opportunity. It was an opportunity to instill fear so they could control. The deadliest consequence of premarital sex is without a doubt the 1,100,000 teenage girls that become pregnant every year. You say, why is that deadly? Because 400,000 of them have abortions, and that's up 100% from 1972. I started crying at the end of procedure because my stomach just ached. It felt like something was pinched. So now they are fear-mongering about abortion. Um, and this is pure propaganda, pure propaganda. And it starts from the position that a fetus is a human and 
to eliminate a fetus is to kill, is to murder. Uh, the bodily autonomy of a woman is not even considered. The, uh, the conditions in which uh, the future child would be subjected to and raised in never considered. This is a bit of pro false propaganda that has been bandied around by uh, anti-choice um, religious uh, groups and churches for decades. Uh, this idea that uh, there is an inevitable and necessary psychological uh, negative impact uh, following an abortion. Oh, here we have a former lesbian. Oh, God, it's another music video. Rick Kua. Kua! Look at all the white people. Look at all the poofy hair. I don't know, with that car though, I think you, you, you might have to give it up for that car. Look, it's another former lesbian. God, this is terrible. I mean, the song is, is crap. Um, it's just a really bad pseudo pop music. Um, but it reinforces the idea that uh, girls don't want sex, boys do, and boys are the predator. And uh, it's the girl's responsibility to, to, to push him away. Because the boy has no self-control at all. Now he's stalking her. They're correct. It really is not their business. Sonic! Wow, that's like the old Sonic. Just call him on his cell phone or send him a text. Oh yeah, it was 1989. Now, that has nothing to do with him wanting to maintain his virginity. That guy is gay. That was crap. This actor was in a lot of episodes. I don't know the guy's name, but he, he did probably hundreds of roles in these uh, little sketch comedy bits. Go for it! No, go all the way. Hey, if you already looked at him with lust in your heart, then you know, you've already committed the sin. So, hey, you know, if you've already done it, you might as well go all the way. That's what you're saying. If you've thought about it, you've already sinned. So, what's it? What's? Well, why not? Just do do the deed. If you stop now, already committed the sin, and you don't get the nookie. That was not funny. They did have commercial breaks when it was broadcast on TV. What's hot? This is the segment where they tell us the hottest new contemporary Christian musicians. Carmen! I do remember a lot of these uh, 
Christian band and performers. Um, and I did listen to some of them. And I vaguely remember some of them now. But, like, even at the time, I, I was struggling to... to like this kind of stuff over regular rock and roll music that you could play on the radio. I wasn't allowed to have rock and roll music in the house. If I wanted to listen to any uh, modern music, it had to be something like that. So there was, there's kind of a, a gap. There's a gap in my knowledge of music because I wasn't really allowed to listen to it for a long time. When I became independent, then I became very interested in music and I tried to listen to a lot of the stuff that I missed. What do you pay to play? Uh, 50 bucks. Oh God. Not another music video. The music videos are the worst. The show comes to a halt and we have to listen to some overwrought pseudo pop music. I'm pretty sure those people did not sign any waivers to be recorded for that video. Guilt can be a good thing. And that is exactly what they're going for. They're attempting to make people feel guilty for thoughts, desires, and experiences that are normal. I said before, Blaine Bartell seems like a genuinely nice guy. He's Canadian. And honestly, if there are any rotten Canadians out there, I haven't met them yet. Like, absolutely every person that I know uh, from Canada has been, you know, the kindest people that I've ever met. Canada seems to be filled with the nicest people. But... Blaine, this is not cool. All right, we're getting to family first, and they are recapping the previous episode. I, I do like the opening to family first. See, Dad's in so much of a hurry that, but he still has to stop and answer the payphone. There's a rainbow flag in the background, but that, that's not a, a, an LGBT rights flag. Come on, son. Go ahead and kill me. I don't care. I'm going to die anyway. <laughs> Bit melodramatic. It isn't fair, man. Queers get AIDS, not me. Why me? Queers get AIDS, not me, man. Oh. Connie, the sister. Who are you calling? This character is written as a child, like a small child. Listen to her lines and listen to her delivery. She's supposed to be an older teenager, and yet she sounds like a child. I think we've worked it out. Oh, that's great. You're not going to have an abortion. Yeah, right. Amy, get off the phone. Now. Listen, I know you've made the right choice. That little baby inside you is so precious to God. Well, Connie, it won't be me. Under these circumstances, honey, no. It, she made the right choice, though. I know she did. I just wish she would have made the right choice three months ago. Yo, Mrs. Collins is, uh, dug up oh, for Christ's sake. Huh? Clarence has the not gaze. So talk manly, don't I? Yes, he's trying to be hyper masculine because a guy hit on him. Clarence, do you know how to knock? Yeah, like this. Listen, These I'm are the jokes. No, this is way more important. Take a look at me. 
Take a good long look at me, okay? What do you think? What do you see? Come on, tell me. Well, I, I see you, Clarence. You're a great guy. I like you a lot, okay? Get your hands off me. That's just what you'd say. I'll tell you who's queer. Ty is queer. Ty? The, the guy in our track team? What do you mean? The, the guy that we're in the locker room with? The guy that we shower with all the Their time? use of the word <laughs> queer is pissing me off. How do you know this? Well, he tried to put the moves on me last night. Wait, come on, Clarence. I think you're jumping to conclusions here. I mean, hey, Ty talks about girls all the time. I mean, he has girlfriends himself. Doug, poor innocent Doug, please sit down. Sit down. Okay, let me put it to you like this. You've got a restaurant, right? And you've got the kitchen, and you've got the dining area. This is killing me. This is killing me. Ways. Well, Ty is the door. Okay. Okay, I can see we're really getting somewhere. Okay, sports. Sports, okay? Okay. okay. Baseball. Okay. Yeah, baseball. Okay. Okay. Think of this. You got some guys that hit right handed, then you got some guys that hit left handed, and then you've got the guys that. The switch hitters. No way. Ty is, is, is by. Wow. You couldn't just say that? Oh, great. Well, Sh Cheryl's really picked a winner to go out with tonight, hasn't she? Listen, this is supposed to be funny, all right? Not to tell a soul. Okay. They are terrified. Oh, hey, that's the... What's that building called? That It's an apartment building. It, we used to call it the big heroin needle. I have a friend that lives in there, actually. Um, oh, we're back at the abortion clinic. Look how terrified she is. As we... This... We, we get the uh, music video within the show now where we will get some heavy uh, anti-abortion propaganda. And in this case, this teenage girl is being forced to have the abortion by her mom. They can't uh, consider the possibility that someone might make that choice for themselves. And so they're gonna really tug at your heartstrings. You're, they're going to show you some images that uh, of, of precious babies and Connie Collins, who's also a precious baby. And I can't remember if this is the one, I, th I think they may show s like some gruesome images of, yeah of some uh, aborted fetuses. So they are using both the carrot and the stick. I mean, of course you would want a, a precious innocent baby, right? Well, I'm disgusted, but not for the reasons they intended. Every time they say the word queer, I want to throw something at the television. I'm not going to do that because this is my television and I don't want to damage it, but it still pisses me off. I will. No help from Cheryl, but I will. Cheryl? Not Cheryl. Clarence, will you quit it? Be a man. Oh, oh, oh. I said a man, not Santa Claus. Okay, Doug. These are the jokes. Now, how did Susan get AIDS? Well, I suppose you could have got it from Ty. Ah! Ty! Susan, they went out for a year and he touched me. They've got AIDS. He touched me and he swam in my pool. Well, I hope he didn't pee in the pool. Wait, wait, wait. wait. You don't get AIDS from touching. I, I, I don't think. Ty. Ty and Cheryl are together right now, Clarence. Ah! Oh. oh, no. He's got a poster that says God's will. What am I going to say? I mean, what am I going to say? You're, you're with a gay guy and he's got AIDS? I mean, she, she'll think I'm jealous. Doug, it doesn't matter what she thinks about you. We're talking about her life here. Yes, they, they have to get her away from the gay guy to save her life. You see, homophobia is a matter of life and death. Controlling the uh, actions of women is for their own good. Oh, no, that, uh, that neon green turtleneck, that's, yeah, I'm not, I'm not feeling that. He's feeling that. They clearly do mind. No thanks. I'm fine. Don't look at me. Don't 
touch me, get away from me. Can I talk to you over here for a so The, the reaction that they want people to have toward gaze is disgust. That's really what their heroes do, is react know. with disgust. Doug has something you'd like to tell us. Go ahead, Doug. Fine. You want to play that way? Okay, Ty, isn't there something you need to be telling Cheryl? I think someone here has a big mouth. Well, why don't you tell her, Ty? Tell her that you made a pass at Clarence last night. <laughs> what? What are you saying here, Collins? Huh? Are you trying to say that I'm gay? Is that what you're trying to say? The last thing you are is happy. What we're trying to say is that you're like uh, queer as a one dollar bill. <laughs> Come on, Cheryl, let's go. The jokes. All right, Collins, let's go. Listen, I didn't come to fight. I want to talk. You want Cheryl. Winner takes all. Let's go. Listen, this thing is not about Cheryl. It's about you, Ty. Now, you can deny it all you want, but we both know what happened with Clarence last night. Clarence does a lot of things, but he does not See. Lie. Oh. So I made a pass at your little buddy. What's the matter? You jealous? You're sick. Listen, You're sick. Sex. So uh, the gay guy or the bisexual guy is is the villain. He's the manipulator. Uh, he he uh, assaults um, the innocent straight people. He spreads AIDS to. The uh, to the straight population, he lies. He he's uh, promiscuous. I just know that if word ever got out about the way you are, that the most every Christian in this school would reject you. And I want you to know that I'm not going to do that. Neither is Jesus. Somebody owes it to you to tell you that that if you'll change the way you're living, that Christ can forgive you, man. Okay, so he won't reject him because he's one of those enlightened Christians. All he has to do is completely change his sexuality, totally become a different person, and everything will be fine. Yeah, well, AIDS doesn't hurt anybody. Who said anything about AIDS? Jonathan. He's got it? So he just told this guy, that was somebody else's private information that he just blurted out because he because he wanted to have a, a sharp comeback to the the villain this is the showdown versus the it's the hero homophobe christian versus the villainous bisexual man and he knew he knew he had aids he faked his physical to make it appear that he didn't so he's spreading aids on purpose you know like all the gays It's none of Doug's business. Crazy about you too, but you have changed. I've changed. I mean, you're the one who's changed. You're the one who come flying back into my life with a mattress strapped on your back. Doug is an asshole. I'm sorry. Okay. You should be more than sorry. You hear that, Mr. Canada? You should be more than sorry. To stay pure. To stay pure. All right, so they could have a, a constructive commentary about consent and about sexual assault and about rape. They're not doing that, though. What they're doing is they are using that as uh, the reason that she is making these advances towards Doug. Uh, because she can't simply have, you know, normal libido and, you know, as a heterosexual woman, she can't simply want to have sex with a guy. 
There has to be some other reason. Ty said that uh, you had something to tell me. He said that, that I had something to tell you. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Listen, nah. I'll write you, okay? Ty okay. in this story is HIV positive, and Doug has opted to not tell her that. Doug is an asshole. I still dig that guy's jacket. This is a duel of the hatchbacks. Car chase at 35 miles an hour. Why would you stop there? They wear a lot of denim in this show. A lot of denim. So now he wants to murder the bisexual man. You know, he really did the right thing, right? Because he, he didn't actually murder the bisexual man, but he only put him in fear for his life. By the way, that's still a crime, what he just did there. Even though he didn't shoot the guy, that's still against the law. Jesus protected her from HIV. By the way, next time I come to see you, I'll have somebody I want you to meet. Take care. <gasps> She's prego. That's Ty's baby. That that's Ty's baby. His name is Ty, so I wonder if it'll be a beanie baby. So we've got some parallel action here as Jonathan is dying of AIDS. The fetus that was nearly aborted is about to be born. God, he didn't protect. I thought he was just trying to ruin my fun, you know? They are not trying to protect people. I have to reiterate this. They are trying to control people. If they wanted to protect people, they would talk about protecting people. There's a lawnmower out there and it's probably being picked up on my uh, microphone. But I'm, I'm, I'm not stopping. I'm going straight through. So I guess Doug Collins is the guy he wanted there at the last moment of his life not the woman that he was engaged to not his family now, the last thing we want to do in this program is give you the impression that sex is a bad thing because it is you but have done nothing but sex. give people the impression that sex is a bad thing i don't want to tell you guys what happened to blaine bartell there was a thing that happened and uh, he lost his ministry, he lost his church, he lost his family, and nearly lost everything. It's not a secret, he's even written about it, he has a book out about it. Um, it and I feel bad for him, I really do, because he really does seem like a genuinely good guy. These ugly beliefs that we've seen in this show He's backed off of some of those, it seems, to me, based on what he posts on social media. I can't help but think that the amount of repression that he had in his life, in his entire life, and, and even uh, placed on himself, had something to do with his downfall. Note their 
choice of words. Homosexual lifestyle. And cleave to his wife, not another man, but his wife. And it also says that we should be fruitful and multiply. Well, it's pretty hard to do that if you're engaged in a homosexual relationship. See, they're still trying to tie uh, sex to procreation. Uh, and this is why homosexuality is, not, is wrong, is because you can't uh, have babies in a homosexual relationship. But a lot of straight people can't um, have babies either. It, it doesn't have... Procreation isn't the point. And here's another former homosexual. So you, you're supposed to treat your date the way you would treat your sister. So, you know, uh, punch her, pull her ear, and push her down the stairs. Hey, I don't know. It sounds pretty kinky to me. I, I, I wouldn't do it, but, you know, that's just what he says. Pure. This equating of virginity uh, and chastity with purity is offensive. And that is demonizing sex. He... He started this segment by saying, hey, we don't want to give the impression that sex is a bad thing. It's just a thing that'll make you impure if you don't do it the way, you know, we say you can. Father, I pray for every person watching the program that, Lord, they would open their heart to receive you. Open my heart! At some point, I need to talk about the concept of sin. thank you for it in the mighty name of Jesus. Willie George and Blaine Bartel. All right, we did it. We got through part two. Um, I hated both of those episodes. Um, I, I hated them from start to finish. Uh, the first episode was not funny at all, even though it tried. The second episode, I think, tried harder to be funny, but failed. Um, and it's... Um, it's sickening. It's offensive. It's dangerous. Uh, it preaches guilt uh, without uh, talking about uh, safety, protection, education. Uh, it preaches homophobia uh, and hate. There, there was not love toward their villainous bisexual character there wasn't no uh, there's no love there in fact at one point he was uh, threatened with a gun and for them it, it's easy to justify that right because it's a homosexual lifestyle it's not who they are it's, it's a thing that they're doing that they need to stop just stop doing it and everything will be fine conform to the way we think you should be, and it's fine. And it, now, if you don't, you know, we hate that, and we kind of hate you for doing it because the thing that you're doing disgusts us. It makes us feel icky. That, that's it. I don't want to say anything else about this garbage. Um, I don't know if I will watch another episode with you. Um, I hated this. But that's it for now. I'm going to edit this. I'm going to get this uploaded. Uh, so you got yesterday's vlog today, and hopefully you will get today's vlog today. Um, what will happen tomorrow? I don't know. You'll just, we'll just have to see. I will see you then. Bye.